If I can at least try and help new players into the system, if I can encourage existing players to participate more um, and create more safe spaces for um, women and non-binary players to participate, then I'm a happy bunny. Uh, my name is Kylie Kendrick. I'm the technical specialist for eSports at Durham University. And my role is to primarily enhance uh, the students' experience with eSports at Durham. Um, we have a lot of sports teams at Durham um, that obviously have their own facilities. The football players have the football pitch. Um, eSports has nothing. So it was my role to sort of try and build upon that and give them um, opportunities to seek further experiences within the industry and also to climb their student uh, NEC sports leagues. I think having been a, a lifelong gamer, I've experienced a lot of um, adversity and stresses being just existing as a woman in the esports space. So I think when I was younger, there was nothing my nothing for my um, age that would try and alleviate that problem. So I thought I would take it upon myself to try and get involved and make it slightly easier or even better for um, newer people to esports or people who maybe might not even be sure if they want to play. Um, because of the environment. So if I can at least try and help new players into the system, if I can encourage existing players to participate more um, and create more safe spaces for um, women and non-binary players to participate, then I'm a happy bunny. Um, I can't speak for the recruitment process as I'm not a part of it, but um, I do have experience with creating a safe space for um, women of marginalised genders. We have a dedicated Discord server um, that allows anyone from uh, the university staff or student to come and participate in esports, um, and that is a dedicated safe space run by myself and a couple of other moderators who are students. Um, and we hold events, we know we give them opportunities to get involved in the industry again, um, but it's primarily aimed at just ensuring everyone feels safe, everyone feels comfortable, um, and it's a very welcoming space. And that's something that I do try and champion as much as I can. Mm. I think in previous roles, before I joined Durham, I felt very marginalised in terms that my voice just wasn't being heard. Um, you would go to meetings and I would literally have an idea, say it out loud, and the person, the guy next to me would literally rephrase it, and that idea would be perfect. So I was sat there going... Uh, um, so in, when I've experienced that a few times, you know, you get talked over and all that, it just, it just wears yourself down. So once I got to Durham, there was actually a program called um, Aurora, Aurora HE, and it's a program designed to empower women in the workplace. And I went through this course and realised that I do have a voice. I do have, you know, everything that a, a, a company and organisation would want. I've got skills. So I used this course to sort of have an epiphany with myself and created this, this role that I'm in now, this eSports role. And senior leadership thought there was enough value in it to take it further and it would be a benefit to the university. So in a way, I kind of want to thank those guys that were jerks to me because it's made me who I am and it's empowered me to move on in my, in my career. It's, it's difficult if you're completely alone. I think the first thing to do is seek out support from those ne the close to you, um, family, friends, that sort of thing. Um, but to ultimately know that it's not going to be everywhere. This doesn't happen everywhere. It's, in, it's only in some cases. And if you feel that strongly about how we are being treated, then you have to go through the proper channels. And that's obviously a long and lengthy process sometimes. Um, but if you need the strength to do that, family and friends will support you through it wholeheartedly. And hopefully your HR team would too. Um, but it's difficult to just say, just ignore it. Like that, we get told that all the time. Just ignore it. Do do you type thing? But sometimes it's not that easy, and you do need a bit of support. And I remember leaning on a couple of friends and you know my husband and my family at the time, saying I've been wronged. What do I do? And they you know said just follow follow what you think you should do. We'll support you wholeheartedly. Um, and luckily, like I say, I had a good support structure. For those that don't, it's, it is a difficult situation to be in. And I think all you have to do then is just rely on your, your character and, and know that you're in the right place and just approach through the proper channels. You, you know you don't need to do any slant or anything like that or go a bit, a bit OTT. But if you're doing the right things in the proper channels, then hopefully the, the right thing will come to you. For, 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 for someone like me, I'm quite... I'm introverted and I'm extroverted, so I really like my own time, but then I really like things like this where I get to socialise and talk to people. And I think one of the biggest things you can do as a person is speak to somebody else. I think that's the main thing to get support because then you create links that you may not have had previously. It might open doors that wouldn't have been there previously just by having a simple conversation, just by saying, hi, you know, what do you do? How are you? It's opened so many doors for me. And I think that is one of the biggest skill sets someone can have just being able to articulate anything to anyone is such a big skill 
Without it, I don't think I would have got anywhere near where I am now. Um, you know, shy bands getting out. It's, it's, it's a phrase for a reason. If you don't ask, you don't get. And I think that's definitely one of the things that's got me so far. It's not any of my qualifications. It's nothing that I've learned through school or college in the past. It's things that I've taught myself. And if you can have that discipline to be hungry, seek, seek you know, um, information about what you're interested in and just try and talk to the right people, get involved in the right groups that's the best thing you can do and it's the, it's only going to get better from there right now. I, rem- I remember sort of getting involved with women esports at the beginning um, and I thought it was just a wonderful initiative to, to be a part of so I just had to, had to try and help out some way. Um, if, there, if this was around when I was playing sort of you know 20 years ago it would have been ideal because when we had female teams back in the day sorry women's teams back in the day it was very um oh you're a token team like you're you're attached to this org but you're a token team no one sees any value in it and honestly I think they were right because we didn't get half as much support we didn't get half as much um value put into us and we were just there but nowadays you can see it's changed you can see some orgs really value their teams they really put the effort in it's the same as the as, as the male teams um and that's a big advancement I think I think we're still a long way off from becoming the ideal for everyone. I don't think anyone knows what the ideal is yet. Um, But certainly the support is there, and I think it needs to keep continuing on. But without initiatives like Women in Esports, it wouldn't have been brought to the surface. No one would know what our plight is. Um, So it's very important to keep that going, and especially to the younger generations who will look up to players who are currently existing and think, I want to be that place. They need the support. Well, to to be fair, things have changed over the last 20 years not massively toxicity still exists it's still going to exist there's no surefire way to hold anyone to account at the moment it's very hit and miss I think I report 10 people a week and two people get reprimanded for it the odds are great but it is getting better and I like to think that because more attention has been drawn to women in esports that they will have more drive and determination to take it further more publishers and sponsors will see the value in it and you know, we need to be start to educate kids from a younger age about the values of, you know, being diverse, you know, having equality and equity and being inclusive. And I think that has to start at schools. It has to start with parents, has to start with schools. We didn't learn anything like that at school at all. It was sort of, you just sort of had to pick it up as you went along until you got to same school and college. But I think if kids are more aware of situations at the moment, um, they'll play games with more of an inclusive mind they'll just be more open to to what's happening um even my boys i haven't raised my boys to be like oh boy blue girl pink but they still go oh girl in a dress that's what it is it's something that's just i don't know how it's taught but it certainly wasn't me that taught them that so where is it coming from that's that's the main question I'm absolutely thrilled to be involved in the very first one. Um, I've been involved with women in esports for a while, not not in the direct sense, but more of a support sense. Um, and it's been great to see it grow into something absolutely massive and recognised, you know, throughout the country. Um, I think next time it would be great to see it in person because I think there's massive networking opportunities here um, that just isn't available with an online thing. But it is what it is. I think the talks were fantastic. The panels were great. I've met so many new people as well, which is nice to see. And it's in Sunderland. It's in the north. We need more things in the north, which is exactly what this place is for. So it's fantastic. Love it.